My name is Koki Sali. I um, am from Cambodia. Um, I suppose my background is six years of running a charity, um, which is focused on quality education in Cambodia. Um, we've built four schools so far, and we're looking at building our fifth school next year. We're going to do it um, on a beach, which is going to be beautiful, and there's a story behind that. And um, right now I'm here because I'm trying to start my own, my own social enterprise, which is the next phase of our investing in quality education in Cambodia. And it's about school packs and stationery. Um, and people probably don't know why I started a charity, so I'm going to tell you that part. Um, I was born in prison during the Khmer Rouge Civil War. And the first three years of my life was lived in prison. And even though I don't remember scenes and witnessing trauma or torture um, or feeling or remembering starvation or hunger. I, I'm pretty sure that every cell in my body does remember and feel it because growing up in Australia with all the privileges that most Australians have, um, I couldn't help but feel that there's something missing that I didn't know about in my past and as I grew up and first of all discovered that my family um, walked three days and three nights through the jungles of Cambodia to the borders of Thailand and we got smuggled across and um, stumbled into a refugee camp and through miracle and luck um, people that saw us and cared enough to help decided to to help us and a French doctor on, in the refugee camp called his friends and contacts all over the world and within two months my family was on a plane to Australia um, so Knowing that I had a great education and being told that I was lucky to be in Australia, um, when I was in my 20s, I thought that it was time to go back and help rebuild Cambodia. And I said to my dad, um, is there anyone in Cambodia that you know that could help us? And a few weeks later, he sat me down and said, Koki, there's, um, I have something to tell you. Um, there's a village in Cambodia that will give you land for free if you build a school for them. And in my heart, I thought this is amazing because this is the one obstacle that I thought I could never overcome. And that was getting land in a foreign country that I don't know uh, or have any um, real connection with. And it was delivered to me on a plate. So um, we, me and some friends um, decided we, all we had to do was raise some money, then go into the village and build the school. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> um, and you know what? It was that simple. We did. We went, we raised enough money, we went in there, lived in the village for two months, built a school together. And during that time, some of the elders came up to me and they said, Koki, I remember you when you were three years old and you ran away from this village. Um, do you know that Koki Temple is around the corner and that's where you were born? And my parents didn't tell me this part, <laughs> this very important part. Um, and so this experience, which was always going to be emotional, turned into this deeply moving experience that I can't describe still. And I went to the temple and I saw Koki Temple, which is how I got my name. And it's called Koki Temple because it's surrounded by Koki trees. And there were Koki trees um, that, that, that were on the grounds that were there when I was there that had bullet holes in them. Um, and it just... Oh, it just threw me, it just changed the way I, I saw things. And the experience of building school was amazing and we left and I thought that was it. I never expected or planned to continue with that journey. But we got letters from other people at surrounding villages saying, we need a school too. So what ended up happening was I realised if I'm going to continue doing this then I'm going to need to start a charity or some kind of organisation. And that's how Baby Tree Project started. And the idea of Baby Tree Project is that as children, we have the power to change the world. We don't have enough um, programs or projects to allow us to do that, but children can change the world. And that's where that idea come from. So if you're a child and you have the experience of changing the world, then you will grow up to be an incredible adult with that belief and who knows what you can do in your adult life if you've already changed the world as a child. And we did some little programs. So I was in Japan at the time and I spoke to some, I was a teacher and I spoke to some of my students and I said, all right, um, we're going to change the world today. <laughs> 
and this is my proposal. There are kids in this world that don't have access to water. You can actually give them that, that access. All you have to do is come up with an idea that raises some money that will build a well for this family and surrounding families. And so they made badges and they drew their little things and they made it, they made um, posters and the plan was, there was a plan, was if they sold 100 badges at $3 each, they would have raised up mo enough money to build a well. So they went to Yoyogi Park, which is where all those crazy Japanese people dressing up and they stood next to them and they yelled and screamed their little hearts out. Five ten-year-olds in Japanese that I didn't understand. But they were saying, we are kids and we want to um, build, build a well. You guys are adults, what are you doing to change the world? And within two hours they sold 111 badges, scarves, t-shirts, and they touched some, something in the community there because adults came and were talking to these kids about what they were doing and it was beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And, um, and those kids within one hour built a well for a family in Cambodia. And that's the kind of change that I want to see, that kids can actually do things and, and I don't know what they're going to do in their adult life, but they know already that changing the world isn't so hard and it's not difficult. So from that start, we've grown into an organisation that's based in five countries. Um, we're trying to develop systems and processes in place. We've built four schools. Um, and we plan to build a fifth one. It's going to probably be our last because our focus is going to be on making those five schools the best possible schools in Cambodia. And that means investing in uh, the teachers, the children, um, scholarships, curriculum, and something that we never really imagined and that was quality education isn't just about a safe space for kids to go to. It's much more than that. So kids once we've built trust with them, we'll tell you what is going on in their lives. And they can't study if they're not happy. And the rule of happiness is something that's core to Baby Tree Projects, to my new social enterprise and to my life. And the kids were telling me that, um, that the, the one obstacle that wasn't making them happy at home wasn't hunger, it wasn't not going to school, it wasn't um, health, it was seeing mum and dad fight. And that's to do with financial stress and unemployment and things like that. So the key to quality education, perhaps in our experience, is gonna have to be something much more deeper and reaching that kind of change is gonna be something that is a huge challenge, but I don't think it's insurmountable because what I've always done in my approach to these things is that we can do anything, we can change anything if you have a relationship of trust. And if the chief of the village thinks or believes that I'm like their family and son, then they'll be on board and they will work with me, not against me, to, to make some change. And so I'm hopeful that those projects that we have ready to go will be funded through the social enterprise. The social enterprise is um, something really close to my heart and it's called Boy and Bee. Um, it's an idea that was hatched between <laughs> me and my sister um, so that Babe Tree Projects can continue its important work without having to rely on unstable funding. And Boyne B is about children that when they face difficulties in life imagine escape and imagine things too to overcome obstacles in their real life. It's how I did it as a child when I was in prison. It's how I did it growing up in Australia. It's how we did it. And um, it's, our values are freedom, ha happiness, a sense of humour and finding beauty in the smallest things. And unfortunately, um, my sister's not here to... <laughs> Sorry. Um, my sister's not here anymore to help continue that journey, so it's going to be a hard one, but here's what I've discovered. The promise between 
a brother and a sister, it's much more powerful than than any grief, loss, or obstacle that the world can throw at you. And um, so this is so I, what I know for sure is that it's going to succeed. It's going to happen simply because I keep my promises. And when you know that you just won't give up on something, the end result is that it's going to happen. So that's the one exciting thing <laughs> I have looking to look forward to at the moment. And um, Boy and Me is going to fund the, the school project. Um, the reason why it's on at a beach is because <sighs> my sister passed away from cancer and during that process, I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but um, there is pain that you go through and um, there were moments when she was in so much pain that her body would go rigid and I would hold her hand in hospital and I'd say to her, like when you were little, you have to escape. Tell me the place, the pretty place that you go to. <laughs> and she's described, I can see turquoise water through her pain. I can see a beach, I can see a hammock. Our goddaughter's playing on the sand. My friends are all drinking mojitos, <laughs> watermelon mojitos. That's where I am. And that's where I go to meet her now. So the school which will be built in her name will be also built on a beach and her ashes will be spread there. And that place will be a place for children with big dreams to grow up and begin their journey on changing the world. That's my story. <laughs> I can't believe how hard that was. <laughs>